Yo, I'm Brendan. Can the average American afford a house right now? Or if they can't, then how much money would they need to be able to make to afford the average house? As I'm sure you're well aware, the average home price has just skyrocketed in the last few years and income hasn't been able to keep up. And so my wife and I were curious, how much house can the average person afford and how much money do you need to make to buy the average American home? After going through that research and the calculation behind that, then I'll go through what that actually looks like to maximize how much home you buy. I think it's going to be a lot of stress and strain on your life and it doesn't leave you any room to invest or breathe or be anything but house poor. And so I'll also propose an alternative to maxing out how much house you can buy at the end of this video. So what is the average American house? Well, as much as possible today, I'm going to use median prices because I think median is more representative to the world for most of us. Averages are skewed upwards by like the top 1% of people. So they're included in the average where a median is a little bit more like normal people. So the median home price is $412,000 right now, quite a bit. The median mortgage rate though is even worse. It's ridiculous. 7% right now. If you look this up online, it'll say like 6.89%, but that's for like pretty good credit. We'll bump that up 0.1% just so it covers the average people like you and me who don't have absolutely perfect credit. And the median down payment right now is something that I had to kind of extrapolate because the average down payment is 17%. But whenever you look at the data across age ranges, the older people typically put down a lot more money than the younger people. So like Gen Z right now is putting down maybe 8%. And remember, we're talking about the average. So if we shift that down to a more realistic number that the people like you and I can probably count on, I'll bet it's 10%. And even that's a lot, 10% down on a $412,000 house, 41 grand. So if you put all that together, then the average American home has a monthly payment of $2,804 per month. It's a hefty one. So now our job is to look at the average American income and then compare these two and figure out, can the average income pay for the average house. Right now, the median household income in terms of a yearly amount that you're getting before taxes is $75,000 per year. So if we divide that by 12, we get a median monthly income of $6,250 per month. And now what I've tried to do is figure out exactly how much money the average person who doesn't have a mortgage in America is paying in debt payments every month. The only data I could find that's even close to this is average monthly debt payments in America right now, but that includes mortgage payments. And the tricky thing about this is there's tons of people who are grandfathered in who bought a mortgage 10, 15, 20 years ago, and they're paying very little money compared to what people pay now. So I looked at enough charts to try and extrapolate the ratio between people's mortgage payments and their just regular debt payments, everything else outside of the mortgage. My estimation is that about two thirds of that debt payment every month is mortgage related. So the other third of it, then we can say, well, if you don't have a mortgage, then that still applies to you two thirds of that average debt figure is $522 per month in terms of someone's regular debt payments they're paying for student loans and credit cards and buy now pay later and whatever else is in their life outside of a mortgage. Because we're talking about somebody who wants to get a mortgage. So we know how much the average American makes, or in our case, an extrapolation of the median American and how much they've got in current debt payments. So now we can take that to our average lender and figure out how much money they'd be willing to lend us and compare that to the mortgage that we need to buy the average American home. Based on my research today, the average lender has a maximum debt to income ratio that they're willing to accept of about 45%. So that means all your debt payments, not just the mortgage itself, can't be more than 45% of your gross pay. And it's funny to me that they use gross pay because who can have access to 100% of their pay? Everyone gets taxes taken out. It just seems like a silly way to calculate this, but that's the way it's done. I'm by no means a mortgage lender, so I can't say you know the logic behind all of this, but this is the system we're in. So if the most money we can spend is 45% of our gross monthly income, then we've got to take out that that current payment. So 522 bucks represents 8.4% of our current debt load. So that leaves us with 37% that we can allocate towards the mortgage then. So the lender is basically then saying 37% of your income can go towards your house. And so if we take 37% of $6,250 in gross monthly income, that leaves us with the max mortgage payment we could expect to get from the lender of $2,290 per month. So can we afford the average. Well, the average mortgage based on the, the figures of the average house above left us with a payment of $2,804 per month, but the average person can only get a loan for $2,290 per month. So the quick answer is no, the average person with the average income cannot buy the average house. I'm saying average, but we're still trying to shoot for median here as much as possible. So then if we whip out a mortgage calculator and we work backwards, we can try and figure out exactly how much money then the average income can afford. If we're putting 10% down and we're not going over $2,290 per month in terms of the payment, that means the house we can afford 
is $330,000. Significantly cheaper than the average house people are buying right now, the median home price. So that means buying a way smaller house, potentially an older house, and probably not being in as nice of a location as the average house that you really want to buy. But now this begs the question, okay, let's say I do want to buy that average house, the, the median home price of $412,000. How much money would you need to make based on this current structure to be able to afford that house? Right now, this current median household income that we're starting from is $75,000. How much more above that do we need? Well, based on my math, we need $88,693 per year to be able to afford that $412,000 house. And all of this is assuming that you can scrape together the down payment of at least 10%. Somewhere between a, a $33,000 down payment and a $42,000 down payment is a lot of cash. And here's the basic math of how I got there. I just worked backwards from that original mortgage payment, added in basically what we're thinking the average debt payment is going to be for somebody and came out with a yearly income number. Well, my problem with all of this math so far is this maxes you out like crazy. It makes sure that you're house poor, which means you've bought as much house as you can afford and you basically have no money left over for anything else. You're not affording vacations or investing. You've got no money for burritos and race cars. This is a problem. So what I want to do is talk about another way to approach this and try and pick a healthier number that reduces the amount of your income that you're spending on the house. And that could be a good starting point. Like even if you just do that and don't plan on investing as much as I'm talking about, that's probably worthwhile because you don't want to max out everything based on what a bank wants you to do. The bank wants us to make them as much money as possible. If we're making the bank happy, then our net worth numbers are not going to be happy. So how much room are we talking about creating here then? How much difference between those normal numbers and what the bank wants versus what I'm thinking about? So now let's talk about what it would look like to do this the investor's way. I think what would be fantastic is if we plan to invest about 15% of our take-home pay because it's a substantial enough amount that we're going to be able to retire and have a really bright future in terms of our finances. Our net worth is going to be growing really well. Hopefully that's the plan anyway. But it's not such a huge savings rate that it's going to be like we don't do anything in our life but save money. Money. All we do is work. We can't do anything else. Like this is kind of a good balance number. You're going to get a lot done. You're actually going to be able to retire, but at the same time, you're not in super miser mode. So initially I think I had done this math wrong because I think if we have about 15% of our take home pay planned to invest, we've got to kind of work backwards to say that's like 12% of our gross pay because our gross number is bigger. So to reach that 15% of our take home pay, we actually need to fig figure in a smaller percentage. So by my guesstimate, it's about 12% of our gross pay. So if we start from that same place where we were before at $75,000 per year as the average median income right now. That's $62.50 per month. 12% of that is saying we're going to invest $7.50 per month, which is a lot. And then our gross pay after investing, so our before tax pay after we invest is $5,500 a month. And I'm doing it in this order intentionally because I'm saying like, no matter what, we're going to be investing. Even before we buy a house, let's just like reset our gross pay to a lower level and say, we're going to be investing $750 no matter what. Then we're going to figure out our gross pay after that. This is more like mental math and the way that you're going to think about this, not so much the way the lender is going to think about it. But I think this makes the most sense for us. So then if we also lower the amount of money that we're willing to give to a bank and only give them a 40% debt to income ratio, then that leaves us with a total that we can borrow with all of our other debt payments and the mortgage combined at $2,200 a month. And then if we still maintain that average monthly debt payment between cars and student loans and buy now, pay later, and whatever else you have going on in your life of about $522 per month, that means the amount of our debt to income ratio that we can put towards the mortgage is about $1,678 per month. And if we work a little bit backwards with a mortgage calculator here, we can figure out, okay, we've got $1,678 per month to spend on a mortgage. How much house can we buy? We've got a more reasonable amount of debt to income ratio. We've prioritized investing. That's all happening first. So what are we left for? How do we put this number into Zillow and start shopping for houses? By my math, it's not a lot of house. $240,000 in 2024 or beyond is just not a lot of house. This is a much smaller, older, worse condition, less renovated, worse neighborhood kind of situation. And I'm no guru here with all the magical answers. I don't have something to pull out of my hat and say, here's how we fix all of this. You just do X, Y, and Z, and then suddenly you can both invest and afford a house right now. I think homes are just incredibly unaffordable right now. When the home prices rise as much as they have and the mortgage rates rise as much as they have, you've gotten this huge unaffordability situation that's just totally crazy. So if it was me, and I was potentially thinking about buying a house and my option was to either keep renting at an okay place and be able to invest or totally max out my budget and be super house poor, but technically squeak into a house. 
depending on my life situation, I would probably lean towards investing, but that's got to be something that you make because ultimately I think buying a house is a lot more of a lifestyle decision it is than a move to increase your net worth. I can't count on the real estate market saying this one house that I bought in this one zip code is for sure going to go up in value. And then someday I'll be able to pull liquid assets out of that and use that to cover my expenses. Like I can't plan on doing that, but I can plan on doing that if I'm actually investing the money. So obviously this is an investing channel. I'm an investing nerd. I want to count on investing the money. That's like my big priority, but you've got to make the right decision for you and your life and your family. But now we've got to ask the question of what if you want to have your cake and eat it too? What if you want to be able to invest a reasonable amount of money to be able to retire, but also afford the average home, this median American house price of $412,000 per year. Let's say we still want to invest about 15% there change that little typo there. So we've got the same mortgage payment as when we very first started, this 2804 per month, based on the median American house price of $412,000 per year, the median American borrowing rate of 7%, and the median amount down of 10%. And then if we factor in our guess as far as everyone's debt payments outside of their mortgage, being that 522 per month, that means our total debt payments that we're expecting to have is 3326 per month, the same as we started with. But if we want to be reasonable and lower our debt to income ratio a bit from the lender being able to do 45% because he's going to make as much money as possible. We want to lower that a little bit down to 40% gross debt to income. That means our new baseline gross income per month is 83.15 per month. And this is before we factor in our investing or 12%. So then if we want to invest 12% of our gross pay, that's another 1100 bucks a month we've got to make, which means the monthly gross income that we need to have our cake and eat it too, to buy the median house price, to invest 12% of our gross pay, that means we need to be making almost 9500 bucks a month. By my math, 113000 $400 per year. And this is all talking about household income. So this could be dual income. This could even be a couple of adults and like a teenager, you know, however you want to put all this together and make this income number work. This to me is a lot more of an ideal situation to be able to afford the house more reasonably and afford to invest a good amount. But we've got to acknowledge a couple of realities here. The odds are that my math is wrong in some way. So let me know where it's wrong because this is a lot of math today and I'm by no means a math whiz. And so I probably have calculated something wrong. But I think even with that error, we've come across the same truth, which is, my gosh, it is incredibly difficult to afford a house right now. Houses are really high. Incomes haven't kept up with it. And it's no wonder that people are either A, not buying houses, or B, not investing, or maybe not either. Those things are both very expensive to do well right now. There has been a bit of talk that the Fed might lower the federal funds rate this year, which could mean that then mortgage rates go down. And that could help you if you're looking for a mortgage, because I don't want to pay 7% on a mortgage. So I don't blame you that you don't want to either. It's a crazy rate, but that's what it looks like to buy a house right now in America. It's very, very difficult. I don't think that this is one of those templates that's actually worth sharing with you because I probably have some errors in here somewhere. So I don't think this template's necessarily reliable enough that I want it to just be out there in the world. But I think it accomplished the mission today, which is to say, dude, it's no wonder that these numbers don't match up, that you can't have it all. If you're not pretty deep into the six figures, I just don't know how you could buy a house today and invest today. It is really, really difficult. But regardless, I hope this was helpful for you. If you liked the video or you wanted to just leave a secret comment for fun, then the secret comment word for today is garage, or you could do like a little car emoji because whenever we were looking for a house, I really wanted a garage. I know it's not that hard to build one in, but you know, it's kind of nice to have it done for you already. Word of caution though, do not back the car into the garage door. It's very expensive to fix. All right. See you guys tomorrow. Bye. <laughs> yes, I did that.